Good morning, YouTube. JT Serenity Farms prepping here. So, I've discovered another very good article by Mike Adams at Natural News where he is plugging Brandon House of WVWTV.com. There was a interview with General McInerney, many of who you know. I've always liked and respected the General's thoughts and opinions on topics. Okay, in this interview, which you can find, it's a video, uh, General Thomas McInerney, retired three-star general, is openly calling for President Trump to recognize the severity of the cyber war assault on America by invoking the Insurrection Act, suspending habeas corpus, and initiating mass arrests under military authority. Okay, so he is highly accomplished uh, military veteran, loyal patriots, and he realizes that much of the existing government, aka the deep state, has gone rogue. Spineless Republicans gone rogue. The courts gone rogue. All the three letter agencies, uh, some of their higher ups, gone rogue. And he realizes that these people, officials, they've willy, willingly engaged in coordinated treasonous election rigging in order to achieve the overthrow of the executive leader, President Trump. Now, when this happens, when government officials decide to go rogue and courts cannot be trusted, which we clearly see, Military authority can be invoked by the president, complete with mass arrest of treasonous actors, of which we know many, military tribunals that will bypass the civilian courts. This would obviously include the seizure of corporations that are actively working to undermine the U.S., and that includes big tech most of the left-wing media that has been complicit and have committed election rigging and acts of journal terrorism. So, first let's determine what's the difference between martial law and the Insurrection Act. Both use military forces. Both will result in a suspension of a couple, if not all, of our rights. Specifically, the First and Second Amendments. The First Amendment being one that would, for sure, involve the press to stop their misinformation, their censoring, just shut them down. Okay, so, the difference between martial law and the Insurrection Act, as I understand it, do your research, martial law, First and Second Amendment are suspended, U.S. citizens could face court martials, the president is the commander in chief. So he is authorized to implement martial law. But he would have, especially in this case, a lot of difficulty trying to get it through any of our branches of politicians here. Congress, Senate, 
public outcry for half the nation would be ridiculous, but it's going to be either way. It's very likely martial law would not be implemented regardless of what is happening in the country, which is why General McInerney is suggesting the Insurrection Act. Now, under the Insurrection Act, governors generally have the authority to maintain the calmness, the safety, the domestic peace and tranquility of their own states. This was witnessed when all the libtard cesspool cities were rioting, burning, looting, assaulting, and murdering innocent citizens. Those governors had a legal and moral obligation to quell that and stop it immediately, and they didn't raise a finger. President Trump could have overrode them. Normally, a governor has to request assistance. But in this particular case, with the George Floyd crap, and then the BLM and Antifa terrorists in, in Minnesota and Philly, and President Trump could have said, you guys are not doing your jobs, step the hell out of the way, we're coming in. Okay, so, because the... Posse Comitatus Act generally bars the federal military from participating in domestic law enforcement issues. But the Insurrection Act creates an exemption to the Posse Comitatus Act. It does allow the president to use military to suppress a domestic insurrection, quote unquote, but only at the request of the governor, but the president can bypass them when it's clear and obvious that they either A, can't handle it, or B, are not even attempting to handle it. Alright, so, with that being said, he can implement the Insurrection Act without approval. He just, he can do it himself. He's the commander-in-chief. So, the highlights from the McInerney video are many. I'm not going to do them all, but uh, here's a few. What took place in America was not merely voter fraud, but rather cyber warfare. These were acts of war against America using cyber warfare weapons and techniques to overthrow the government via a rigged election process. This we know. McInerney calls for the president to invoke the Insurrection Act, suspend habeas corpus, then he can declare martial law and depose the military to seize and secure all the voting machines. Don't ask me why this wasn't done the day after the election. Most of them have been scrubbed, wiped. There's 27 USB cards missing. There's shredding machines pulling up to voting stations. They are blatantly and overtly right in front of us committing a crime and then laughing at us while they cover their tracks. Okay, so six to ten states we know coordinated via cyber warfare to change the outcome of the election. These are treasonous acts. Russia, China, and Iran were also involved, which adds to the treason. Always, always follow the money. Okay, the FBI, the DOJ, all our three-letter agencies have been AWOL on this, apparently not lifting a finger. Okay, so Chris Krebs from CISA, CISA, was lying when he said this was the most secure election in our nation's history. Okay, and he's part of the deep state, and he's also been fired. Okay, now... President Trump must declare a national emergency based on the executive order from September 12, 
18, which names foreign interference in U.S. elections. If you remember, I made a video about that, and I'm going to link that to this video so you can go back and look at that. It is obvious that there was foreign interference in our election. Okay. He, McInerney states the president must start arresting these people right away under a national emergency. McInerney said, I would declare martial law. So, officials from five swing states were engaged in pre-planning pre of treasonous acts. Not just fraudulent voting, but treason. They have tried to overturn the government. Okay, so Chris Miller took the place of Krebs at the DOD because the military active duty is going to have to suppress Antifa and BLM, the two Democrat uh, started, funded, and supported terrorist groups. The president should suspend the December 14th Electoral College meeting and the inauguration of the new Congress on January 6th. McInerney estimates that 85 million people voted for Trump. I think that's low. Military tribunals will be necessary because the regular courts are not capable of doing it. The treasonous actor should be arrested, charged, subjected to military tribunals because this is the only system of justice that is capable of functioning without the current level of corruption we are seeing daily. Suspend the inauguration until this election is fully investigated. This is the last free election we will ever have if we don't expose this fraud. Georgia's runoff election will be stolen using Hammer, Scorecard, and Dominion. The Georgia runoff should be suspended. The corruption cannot be accepted. That we agree upon. America's judicial system doesn't understand how cyber warfare works. So they're missing a real grasp of the crimes and acts of war being committed against the United States. Here's one that's curious. The ownership and leadership of Fox News is complicit in a treasonous act. People who changed votes in the machines should know that they will be cross prosecuted for treason and may face the death penalty. Woo! Treason is treason. The government is tracking the conversions of ballots to votes. That's where the manipulation is coming in. We're tracking that. We have the information. Ho! Oh, there's a lot to take in right there. Does General McInerney have the president's ear? I don't know. He has mine. What happens, though? I'm not saying I agree or disagree with invoking insurrection, suspending posse comitatus, and then putting in martial law. I don't know how I feel about it right now because I know, as you do also, what's likely to happen if that comes down. But it's also the same thing that's going to happen if this gets all the way to the Supreme Court and Trump is duly re-elected as we know he was. The end result is still going to be the same. The libtard sheeple and the deep state are going to riot, burn, loot, assault, and attempt to murder like we've never seen. We already know this. So, do we wait until it actually happens and then have to move in the troops? Or does he take preemptive measures? Obviously, doing it right now without anything having been 
decided because the courts, the judges, and the politicians are corrupt and complicit, it is going to look like the president is doing it because he can't accept what went down. Do you see where we're at? This was all planned. The Democrats knew that it would come to this, that these suggestions would come out. They know how most of the people on their side are going to react to any mention of any of this. And they want it. But it's also the same thing they're going to do when President Trump gets reelected. All I can say is you already know what you should be doing. Food, water, self-defense, medicine, tools, ammo, supplies. Get your group together. As if this wasn't enough to worry about, we also have the vaccination crap still broiling and how that's going to affect our everyday lives. But that's enough for now. Whew. Like, share, subscribe, comment, notification bell. Oh, one of my videos was taken down. I got a warning from YouTube. I appealed it because they said I distributed medical misinformation, so I wanted to know what exactly I said that was medical information whatsoever in my video. So we'll see how that goes. Right now it's just a warning, according to YouTube. Uh, I didn't think I was that big a channel or that big a threat to anybody, but... Hopefully even this statement doesn't get me something, something. But for now, JT, signing off.